There are a few things I want to show you that you can do to enhance the appearance of your forms, like if it's Christmas. You can give them color, alternate between red and green, either for the labels or the corresponding text boxes, or both. I'm flexible. There's no ego here in my training. You can also add images if you like. If you have a picture of Santa, you can insert them here, or a logo, title of the form. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Right click in a blank area, go to the design view. Now, if you find yourself moving the fields around quite a bit in here to enhance your appearance, oh, I don't mean yours, the forms, because you're beautiful. But I mean, if you want to go ahead and always select the same boxes here and move them, deselect, and then select them again, just select them once and then group them. That way, you don't have to, well, select them all again. You can select them all just by clicking on one, because when you pick on one, it's like picking on all of them. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and to select them, we're going to marquee, as we learned in an earlier training video. Start on the outside, click and drag, and you get a line over to a rectangle. That encapsulates all those that we want to select. Let go. There we go. Now to group them, come up here, click on the Arrange tab, go to the Sizing and Ordering group, and then click on Size slash Space, drop down arrow. And it's all the way down at the bottom, Group. You can see in the pop-up, join objects together to move and format them as if they were a single object. Oh, okay, go ahead and select it. Now they're grouped. How do you know? Click off, because when you click on one, hey, you pick on everybody. So I don't have to, you know, marquee again. I can just click on one, and then I can click and drag, and they're moving. Let me hit Undo. And then, of course, with all of them selected, if we came up here on the Format tab and went to our font group, clicked on the font color drop-down arrow and chose red. They're all in red. I don't want to do that. Let me hit undo. But if I want to go ahead and do it maybe just for the labels and not the corresponding text boxes, well, how does that work? You'd say I'd have to ungroup it. Well, not yet, although that's one option. Instead, you can go ahead and double-click on the border of any one of these, and it isolates that from the group. And after you're in that isolation mode, you can go ahead and click on any of the others, and it won't select them as a group. So I can go ahead and select one, and then hold down the shift key, and do multiple selections here. So if it's just for the labels, hey, mission accomplished. And that way you don't have to ungroup them. So, well, when you double click on the border, it brings up the property sheet. Let me go ahead and close out of that. Not ready for that yet. And then come back up here, and since the red is already highlighted, click on that, and there we go. And then if you want to go ahead and ungroup them, go back to the Arrange tab. Go to the sizing and ordering, click on size space, and down to ungroup. Now, you ought to know that when it comes to ungrouping, whatever you have selected in that group and you ungroup, only the selected are able to break from the group. It won't ungroup all of them. So when I click on ungroup, it just broke these three away from these three. When I click off, click on that one, individual, individual, but when I click on that one, hey, we're still part of the group. So let's go ahead and size space to ungroup those as well. Click off, and now they're all ungrouped. Next, I want to show you how you can draw attention or focus. Like if I want to draw attention to these fields down below, like the total books sold, the retail cost wholesale, I could put a rectangle around it. I know it doesn't sound that interesting, but let me show you. Let me come up here, click on the Design tab, go to the Controls group, click on the More button, and there's our rectangle control. Click on that. You can see when I hover over the grid, it has a plus sign there, meaning that when you click, you're going to be adding something. What is it? Well, whatever's next to that plus sign, which is the rectangle, that's what it's going to be adding. Now, I want to draw a rectangle around these six boxes, and to do that, I want to start in the upper left-hand corner, and click and drag, and let go. And there's the box, but I can't see the bottom of it. So I'm going to hover over the bottom of the grid until I can see arrows pointing up and down and click and drag to stretch that open more. And there we go, there's the box. And let's click off to see what it looks like. And, oh, that's not a Christmas color. In any case, you want to go ahead and probably tweak the format because it's a thin line and it's not a Christmas color. Let's go ahead and select it. And then we can come up here and click on the Format tab and go to the Control Formatting Group. And you can change, well, the shape outline here. But before we do that, because that's such a thin line, let me click off. If you're trying to select it and you can't quite get on there, well, that's ridiculous, right? Instead, you want to come up here, click on the Design tab, and bring up the Property Sheet. Because when you bring up the Property Sheet, remember, you get the Selection option here. 
to help you. So click on the drop down arrow, and what is that? It's a box. Do you see a box here? It's sorted alphabetically, and the B's are up above, so I gotta scroll up, and hey, there it is, box 14. Select that, and it selects it for me. Whew, that way I don't have to sit here and try to get that little line there, but I can do it, at least for now. So it brings it up. And when you bring up the property sheet, before we go to the format, you can also change, like, the style and the border color here. So if you want to go ahead and click in that field, and then click on its build button, you can choose a color. Let me go ahead and click off, and then close out of the property sheet. You can do that in the property sheet. Or again, format tab, control formatting, shape outline, which not only gives you color, there's red, let's come back up here, but also line thickness, and let's make it you know, a little bit thicker. And then let's do shape outline, line type. Uh, you can do something dashing. I mean, on dasher, you know, it's Christmas, dashes. Uh, in any case, we've got the line. I'm good with that. So we can go ahead and click off, see what it looks like. And I guess that's a little bit thick. I could make it thinner. You've got some more options if you can select it and hover over it and right click on it. And we've got special effect. See if that helps. Go over and down and there's the shadow effect. I don't know if you can see that, but let me click on it and then click off. Okay, what does that look like in the form? The grid's kind of throwing me off. Let's right click, go to the form view, and that's not too bad. Okay, right click in a blank area, go to the design view, and last, if we want to go ahead and maybe add a title to our form here, instead of selecting the fields and moving them down to add a label up above, instead you can actually add a form header section that you can go ahead and insert a label in there. So to do that, just go ahead and right click on the detail bar and go down to, there you go, form header footer. Select that and it adds a form heading section and a footing section. And so that's a little bit small. I'm going to hover over the top bar of the detail section here. And until I can see arrows pointing up and down, click and drag and push that down a bit. And there we go. And then to add a label here up at the top, you just come back up here on the design tab to the controls group and it's right there. AA. Click on that and then come down below and you get a plus sign. It says that when you click you're going to be adding what? You're going to add the letter A. No, it means text. When you click, oh that is so tiny. Well, you can't see it until you start typing, right? Okay, you can do it that way. Let me hit the escape key. I don't want to accept that. Or you can try it again. Come back up here and click on the label and then click and drag. Uh, I don't know if my label is going to be that big. Let me go ahead and type in book source sales and come back up here on the format tab because maybe I want to make the font size larger, change the font type by going to the font group and I don't get anything here. I can't select it. Why? Because I'm in edit mode. If I go ahead and click outside of it and then select it without, you know, clicking inside of it to change the text to edit it, just, well, click on the border. Once you select the border, then you can come up here and get your options, you know, make it bold, change the corbel, well, that's kind of, let's do mono, monotype Corsiva, hit the tab key, and let's change the size to, uh, let's see, 16, oh, that's getting bigger, uh, 24, oh, that's huge. And then what about the color, click on the drop down arrow here, let's do green for that Christmassy theme. And if you want to go ahead and resize it, you can hover over the, well, in this case, I'm going to do the middle right resizing handle in the middle of the right side until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. I can click and drag and, and pull that out just a bit more. Or you can hover over it, double click really fast, and it does a best fit, and it totally encapsulates it. So that looks good. I'll keep it as is. And then finally, let's add an image, a logo, like a bunch of books here. And so to add an image, well, you can come up here, go to the Design tab, Controls Group, and click on the expandable button there. And you've got your image control, but as we learned in an earlier training video, well, I don't like it because when you insert an image by using that control, it inserts it as fuzzy. Don't like fuzzies. So let me click off, but instead, I want to insert it, and I can't insert it because that's selected, so I have to click off then it's available, then I can go ahead and click on Insert Image. Click on Browse, and Navigation Pane on the desktop, which I'm already there, you can see it up here in the address. On the desktop in the Exercises folder, you can't find the image, but it's there. Why can't it find it? Because it's only looking for 
bitmaps, um, WMS and EMFs, uh, Windows Media Format. So let's click on the drop down arrow and choose all. And there it is. It's a ping.png. That's the extension of the name. If you want to learn more about extensions, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But in any case, let's double click. And when I hover over the grid, I got a plus sign. That when I click, it's going to add what's it going to add. Well, it's going to add that little image there. Not that, but what we just selected. So let's go ahead and click, let go, and oh, that's huge. And if I want to go ahead and resize that down, let me click on the top border of the details section, click and drag that down. And let me hover over the bottom right hand corner resizing handle, click and drag, and push that in about like that. And then click and drag that up. And let me go ahead and double click on the border really fast to bring up the property sheet for the image. And we covered this in an earlier training video, the size mode, but here we go again. So we have the zoom, so it zooms to fit the picture within the size of the box. You can click on the drop down arrow and stretch it to fit, and it gets a little bit stretchy. Or you can go ahead and clip it, so if the actual size is a big and your box is smaller than the actual size, then it cuts out the part that can't squeeze in it. But let's go ahead and go back into zoom. And let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Let's right click on the tab, go to the form view. Oh, it's got a border around it, and it's not a Christmas color. Well, let's get rid of the border. Right click on the tab, go to the design view. Come up here, click on the format tab, and go to the shape outline. Let's make it transparent, and then right click, form view, it's gone. Cool. Now you can do it that way as far as the title goes for your form, and maybe this is a logo. I could go ahead and Take that and put it over on the left hand side or closer to the right and resize it that way. Or the other option is right click, go to the design view, is let's delete these and come up here, click on the design tab, is to go ahead and insert the title and next to the title, a logo. First of all, the title. Click on that. It adds the title of the form, the name of the form here. And then over to the left hand side, it gives you room, a little box there for the logo. And if this doesn't look familiar to you, the dashed line and that little tag in the upper left hand corner, you haven't watched all my videos. That's a table. And so you got a couple of cells. The cell to the right is for the title. The one to the left is for the logo. And so let's go ahead and delete this. I don't want that to be the title. Then go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard so it accepts our change. And then let's come up here, click on the format tab, and change the font from Calibre to comic something funny comic sans hit the tab key and make it bold oh it's got to be christmas colors click green okay i feel better let's go back to the design tab and then to the cell to the left of it let's add our logo click on logo and it searches in a folder now if it doesn't bring up like all files and it's like meta files or something like that again just click on the drop down arrow choose all files so you can find your image double click and there it is Click off and oh, it's got a blue border around it. If we can select that, come up here, click on the Format tab, Shape Outline to Transparent, and then right click and go to the Form view. Well, I mean, it looks nice as far as size being pretty much equal and close together for the image and the label, but it's got that greeniness that just bugs me. Let me go ahead and right click and go to the Design view because as you recall in earlier training videos that when you go to the Design tab, and use the control, the image, to insert an image. Click, click, double click. Ugh, you see? Ugh. I don't like that. Hit the delete key as opposed to doing it from the insert image drop down arrow and browsing for it. Or since we've already done it, go ahead and click on it and it'll add it when I click. You see how clean that is? In any case, let me delete that and click and drag that back up to the top. There's the con, as it were, to that. If you're in another part of your form and you quickly want to go to the title, just come up here on the Design tab and, of course, click on Title. It takes you right to it. So you can go right to it, make your changes, or go ahead and click on Logo. Opens it up. You can swap that out, but yeah, it's up to you. I prefer doing it manually, creating my own label, typing that in, and then, you know, inserting it from the Insert Image, the logo of the image, so it's clean. And, you know, I can resize it, make it yay big, and do just as, as nice as, well, the defaults here for the title and logo.
Now, if you're working on the form header and you don't want people to see it because, you know, you haven't finished it and the front end user is probably going to look at it and laugh at you, if you want to hide the form header while you're working on it, double click on it to bring up its property sheet and then over, well, on the format tab, you can go to the all tab. It's still there. Visible is visible on the all or the format tab. Ha ha. In any case, you see where it says yes? If you double click and you say no, don't make it visible, then when you right click, and go to the form view for the front end user. They don't see that until you're done with your construction and you know cleaning it up. And then when you're done, right click, go to the design view, and of course double click to make it visible again. And while we're here, we've got the back color for that section. Let's see, click in here, click on the build button, which is that right there. We can go ahead and change it up just a bit, make it, well, it's supposed to be Christmassy, so let's make it kind of not too green updates that section color and let's go to uh, the detail section click on that bar and then we've got the back color let's click on the build button and let's do something a bit more reddish there oh that's looking fancy let's go ahead and right click on the tab and go to the form view and hey i think i did all right one final thing let's go ahead and right click on the tab go back to the design view and close out of the property sheet in the header and footer group here on the design tab, you have date and time. Go ahead and click on that, and you can choose to include well, the date and also the time. Let's do both. Click okie dokie. It adds the coding here. So when I right click and go to the form view, ugh, you see how far Christmas is off? Hey, it's Christmas in July. In any case, that's something that they may need when they're taking orders or they need to know what time when they can go home because, wow, Saturday and it's late. Why am I still here? Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.